Oh, hi. Overhead squat. Frequently asked questions. Bom, bom, bom. We're hoping that today's video will answer many of your questions, which are asked frequently about squats that are performed over. I just read that backwards. Look, Nancy, you're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Let's not suck when we do it. The overhead squat is hard. Let us learn how to perform it. Are you ready? I can't take myself seriously. I gotta stop. No, I'm not gonna stop. All right, Nancy. Can't stop, won't stop. Exactly. Nancy, five rounds for time. 15 overhead squats, 400 meter run. We all know kind of how the run goes. That's one part. 15 squats at 95 pounds or 65 pounds is not easy. It's a lot of volume. You're gonna have that bar overhead for quite a long time. Um, so, being efficient is important. Uh, how you handle uh, each individual rep and how they accumulate is gonna matter. So we're gonna talk about uh, what kind of sort of the bare minimum is as far as movement standards from like a competitive CrossFit perspective so that you can be as efficient as possible, minimize wasted effort, and move as quickly as possible. I.e., you know, be able to demonstrate your fitness through an improved time by being able to move through the overhead squats more quickly. But since you guys are all students of the game and CrossFit Full Circle is a school of strength, we're also gonna talk about where the overhead squat fits in with all the rest of your training right how how it relates to the rest of crossfit and why it's important and what other factors that you can look at in trying to improve your performance in the overhead squat so nancy we already said 15 reps five rounds for time that is 75 overhead squats okay at 95 pounds rx for men that's a little over 7,000 pounds of overhead squatting okay a decent time for competitive crossfitters would be like 15 minutes so that's uh god what is that it's a lot it's like 500 squats a minute or something? 500 pounds a minute? I don't know, it's a lot. It's a lot of overhead squats per minute. It's a very high density of overhead squats. Uh, in, in the mid-workout, two or three things are gonna happen to you, even if you're a good overhead squatter. Your traps are gonna get tired. And you're gonna get tired of holding the bar up over your head the whole time. And of course, your quads are gonna start to really, really burn. Because they're gonna be the ones actually doing the work, moving your body up and down. If you're a bad overhead squatter, we'll just add to that list. There'll be a lot of things that will hurt. Uh, maybe it's your wrists, maybe it's your shoulders, maybe it's your back, maybe it's your ankles, maybe it's your calves. And we'll kind of go over some common faults when we go into more of the demo period here. But that's Nancy. Let's talk about where the overhead squat fits in with everything else. All right, the overhead squat falls under the weightlifting category of you know, weightlifting, gymnastics, monostructural. It's obviously a weightlifting movement. I've got a couple of notes up here like back squat, front squat, overhead squat. If you've been training for a little while, you've probably observed that your back squat is gonna be the heaviest squat that you do. It's gonna be your highest number, right? You're gonna squat less in the front squat. And then finally, you'll probably squat even less in the overhead squat. Why is this? It's principally because of balance, All right? Uh, for a good squatter, like a, an Olympic weightlifter, you know, this will be 100% and this will be maybe 85 to 90% and then this will be like 70 to 80% and the main reason that is is because the barbell moves further and further away from the fulcrum all right in the back squat the barbell is at its closest position to the hip and thusly any deviation in form or technique or movement away from the hip will feel like the least impactful because the lever arm is the shortest so the bar's leverage over the spine is at its weakest but as you move to the front squat, the bar moves from here to here. So it just moves a few more inches away from the hip, not far. Now, when you move to the overhead squat, you moved from here to here, right? And you almost double the distance between your tailbone and the barbell. And as such, any deviation forward or back or left or right or rotationally is gonna be felt uh, quadruply. Right? It's twice the distance, so it's going to feel four times as heavy as it moves away from you. And that's why any small error is going to detract from the amount of weight you can lift. And everyone has some kind of error at some, some level, so this is why these numbers go down. If you improve your balance, you'll improve your overhead squat. Okay? The key is to get the bar as close to the fulcrum as possible and to keep it there. 
okay? And we're gonna discuss how mobility will impact your ability to keep that overhead squat as close to the fulcrum as possible so you can lift the most amount of weight the most efficiently with the least amount of effort, all right? Common problems. My shoulders hurt when I do the overhead squat or my shoulders aren't flexible enough. The truth is your shoulders probably are flexible enough. Almost everyone can achieve a regular overhead position, so there's no reason why they can't achieve an overhead position in the overhead squat, all right? My back isn't flexible enough. This probably also is not true. Black back flexibility is really never required in weightlifting. Your back needs to stay neutral with all weightlifting movements. So the back is probably not the problem either. Are my hips not mobile enough? Almost certainly they are not. Okay, unless you came in here as like a yoga instructor, your hips probably are not mobile enough to keep your back where it belongs and thusly your shoulders where they belong. So you might be feeling it in the shoulders, but it's because your ass is too tight. And we'll talk about how to fix that up, okay? The ankles play a critical role as well, okay? You can't squat all hips in the overhead squat like you might in the back squat. Because in the back squat, when you bend over, the bar stays over the feet and over the fulcrum. But in the overhead squat, when you bend over, you fall down and you cry, all right? So, one way to fake ankle mobility is to get a pair of weightlifting shoes. Now, is this a good answer for Nancy? No, it is not, all right? You can't go run 2,000 meters in weightlifting shoes, but you can still practice your overhead squat most of the time in weightlifting shoes and have much better practice and have a much better time. So, that's the end of the blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about the movement itself. All right, so Jason's gonna walk the bar out and do a couple of reps for us. And this is what a good overhead squat should look like. All right, guys, so we're gonna demonstrate a couple of common faults that we see technically with the overhead squat. And we're gonna do this with PVC for safety's sake. Um, the main one that we see is that people attempt to box squat the overhead squat. So we're keeping the bar fixed out overhead. Jason's gonna drive his hips way behind him like he's a power lifter doing a back squat. Notice the hip angle there and where the bar ends up in relation to his ankles. If that were real barbell, he could be dead. So, with the box squat, here is your main challenge. With that bar located so far away from your shoulders, driving those hips back increases the fulcrum and basically takes that off of being balanced over your base. In order for you to actually accomplish an overhead squat like this, your shoulders have to flex an even greater per percentage. Notice the bar is now way behind him and it looks like his arms wanna fall off. He's having a great time there. If I drive my hips back, my shoulders have to compensate. So, correction, hips forward, shoulders nice and even. All right, shoulders collapsing is another common fault here. We see a lot of people pulling their shoulder blades in as they go down and the elbows collapse. Now that barbell is headed right towards the brain. We need that for kind of everything in life. I was twitching. So, to fix this, we have to actively push up with our shoulders here. Notice how he's shrugging those shoulders high and basically always engaging his tricep. Never stop pressing against that. You have to establish that position before you actually start squatting. Otherwise, drop it on your brain. All right, one of the last faults we see a lot of in our overhead squat is taking the heels off of the floor. So if you notice, Jason is basically no longer doing an actual squat. He's doing some sort of yoga variation where he leads entirely with the knees and he stays up on the ball of the foot. This is very hard to stabilize any load, let alone your own body weight. And it also affects his back and shoulder positioning. And balance and stability. And kind of everything. And everything. The way to fix that, keep your heels on the ground and initiate the movement by flexing at the hip and then dropping straight down. Notice now his hips are tracking, 
back over his heels, and he can really sit down into a squat. E forward, butt back, equal. 